Hello, I'm Simon Whistler, you're watching Top 10's Net, and in the video today, the top 10 amazing life hacks that you're going to want to try on your car. Legendary stock car driver Dale Earnhardt once said, It's a never-ending battle of making your cars better and also trying to be better yourself. While this list won't necessarily better you, these hacks will improve the look and effectiveness of your car. And if you make your car cooler, isn't that at least a little step in the right direction of self-improvement? Number 10. Use toothpaste to clean your headlights. Having clean headlights won't only make your car safer for you, but also for everyone else on the road as well. Clean headlights mean that you can see other vehicles, pedestrians, and other obstructions that might be on the road much better, and it also makes you much more visible to other people who might be using the road. A simple way to clean headlights that are cloudy is to use toothpaste. First, wash the headlights with soap and water, then add a dab of toothpaste, any kind will work, to a damp, soft cloth. Then, rub the cloth on the headlights in a circular motion. After about 15 minutes, you should have headlights that are clean, clear, bright, and most importantly, visible. Number 9. Use nail polish to cover up paint scratches. Scratches on your car don't make your car any less safe, but they surely will eat away at your sanity. Anyone who has purchased a new car will attest to the fact that these scratches seem to just come out of nowhere within the first few months of owning the car. What is even more frustrating about scratches is it may not even be you who's causing them. It was probably just some careless idiot who was responsible for scratching it. The good news is that there are ways to fix the scratch at home without taking it in and paying a professional to do it. The first is to rub shoe polish on the scratch and then use sandpaper to buff out the scratch. The shoe polish will help guide you so that you don't scratch the next layer of paint when you're buffing the car. All you have to do is gently rub sandpaper on the shoe polish until all the shoe polish has been rubbed off. Another way to remove a scratch is to use toothpaste to buff the area around the scratch. Rub the toothpaste on with a soft cloth in a circular motion, just like you would clean your headlights. However, not all scratches can be buffed out. To cover up this type of scratches, find some nail polish that is the same color as the paint on your car and paint over the scratch. Once you do, no one will be able to see it. Number 8. Park east in the morning so your windows will defrost. Preparing a car to drive after it has been sitting outside all night in the middle of winter is a terribly arduous task that no one looks forward to. If you get lucky and it doesn't snow, then you won't have to shovel the snow off your car, but your windows will still be frosted and you can spend the next 5-10 to 10 minutes standing out in the cold, scraping the frost off the windows. The good news is that the sun it will probably defrost the windows for you as it rises in the morning. If you can, simply park your car facing east. When the sun rises, providing it's not too cloudy, it will defrost your windows, and hopefully by the time you have to use the car, the windshield will be clear. Number 7. De-ice a lock Of course, you can only scrape your windows if you get into the car to get your scraper. And that may not be possible, because depending on how cold it is, there is the possibility that the lock may be frozen. In fact, the whole door could be frozen shut. If you are facing the dilemma of a frozen lock, there are two quick and easy ways to de-ice it. The first is to rub some petroleum jelly like lip balm on the key and put it into the keyhole. Try turning it, and if it doesn't work, take the key out and put more petroleum jelly onto the key and reinsert it. You may have to do this several times, but eventually the lock should turn. Oh, and do remember, when you are doing this method, please don't force the key because you could bend it. Another option is to rub some hand sanitizer on the frozen lock. Within seconds, it should melt away the ice because the alcohol in the hand sanitizer has a lower freezing temperature than the ice. This could also help you de-ice the rest of your door as well. Just pour some on the cracks of the door and wait a few seconds. Now, of course, all you have to do is make sure that you don't store all of your petroleum jelly and hand sanitizer in your car. Number 6. How to cool down your car quickly on the other side of the spectrum, from your car being too cold, there is the very serious problem of your car being too hot. Cars essentially, they work like greenhouses and heat up very quickly. According to Jan Null from San Francisco State University, at 70 degrees on a sunny day, after half an hour, the temperature inside a car is 104 degrees. After an hour, it can reach 113 degrees. That is why you should never leave pets or children in an unattended car on a warm day. Of course, it's also incredibly uncomfortable to get into a car that is over 100 degrees. To cool down your car quickly, you open the window on one side and close the door. Go to the other door and then open and close it several times. This will push a lot of the hot air out of the car and it will cool it down. Number 5. How to get rid of car sickness If you've ever had motion sickness, you'll know that it can be an absolute nightmare. It's caused when one of your balancing system sensors, like sight, inner ear, and sensory nerve, feels movement, but the other sensors don't register it. For example, if you are reading in a car, your inner ear would sense the movement, but your eyes wouldn't register the movements because they are focused on the book. In order to get rid of motion sickness, a study published by the journal Ergonomics says to 
tilt your head against centrifugal acceleration, and it reduces the severity of motion sickness. In other words, tilt your head in the direction that the car is going, and you should feel better in a few minutes. Number 4. If you get stuck in the mud or snow, use your floor mats to get out. The main purpose of a car is that they are supposed to move you from one location to another, so when they don't move because of something like snow, ice, or mud, it can be fairly annoying. You may have to ask strangers to help push you out or call for a tow truck and possibly have to wait several hours in the cold and or in the rain for them to come and help. A trick to help you get moving again is to get out the floor mats in your car and drive over them. The floor mats will give your tires a surface to get traction on, and hopefully you'll be able to free your car. Another trick which will save you from having to clean your mats is to keep kitty litter in your trunk and sprinkle it on the snow or mud where you plan to drive. Again, this will give your tires the extra traction that they need to get moving again. Number 3. How to find the gas tank while driving Let's say you're driving an unfamiliar car and you pull into a gas station and then it suddenly dawns on you that you don't know which side the gas tank is on. Of course, you could stop the car, get out, have a look, and then drive in, but that's just pretty inconvenient. But luckily, there is a way to find out what side the gas is on without having to get out of the car. On your gas gauge, the gas symbol, which usually looks like a gas pump, will be on the right if the tank is on the right side of the car. And if the symbol is on the left side, well, the tank is on, you guessed it, the left side. Of course, hopefully you'll be driving a car that has a little arrow next to the gas gauge, which also indicates which side the tank is on. Still, this is a good thing to remember in case the car you're driving isn't quite so helpful. Number 2. How to remove bumper stickers Bumper stickers can be kind of like tattoos. At first you may think they're awesome, but a few years later and they're still around and they're not as great or as relevant as they once were. If it was a tattoo, you'd have to get it lasered off. If you want to remove a bumper sticker or decal though, you don't need to do anything so drastic. Instead, just get a hairdryer and set it to a low heat. Put it about 6 inches from the bumper sticker, don't hold it any closer or the paint could chip, and heat up one end of the bumper sticker. When one of the corners starts to become unstuck, grab it and use it to peel off the sticker slowly while heating up the rest of the sticker as you peel. Once the sticker is off, there might be flecks of paper left, and those can be scraped off with a rubber spatula. Once you've done that, just wash it with a warm cloth. Another trick is to pour boiling water on the sticker several times, or put a rag soaked in boiling water on the sticker. This should cause it to peel off without taking the paint off your car. Number 1. Don't have a heavy set of keys The idea that a car's ignition can be affected because someone has too many keys or heavy keychains on the ring that holds their car key may sound like an old wives' tale, but it turns out that it's absolutely true. Apparently, if you have a lot of keys, something like 20 or more, it can wear out the ignition switch. In fact, this has become a big problem for General Motors, who has now had to recall over 30 million cars in 2014 because of faulty ignitions when heavy sets of keys made the engines of some of their cars turn off. When the cars turned off, the drivers would lose power brakes and power steering, and the airbag wouldn't deploy if there was an accident. The recall was initiated because 12 people were killed due to this very problem. So I really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below and don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos just like this every day of the week. Also over there on the right, a couple of other videos that you might enjoy if you enjoyed this one. And thank you for watching. So you're still here, still watching this video. Maybe you just let it run and you're not actually there anymore. Whatever the case, if you're listening to this, I think you should go check out my new channel. It's called Biographics. It is biographies of notable historic figures as well as present day people. Let me give you some examples. We got the Queen of England, Vladimir Putin. Those just two people on the world stage. We also got Elon Musk coming up, Arnold Schwarzenegger. We even the first serial killer, H.H. H. Holmes? Maybe just H.H. H. Holmes. We look at all sorts of people, longer form, about 20 minutes long, diving into the story of their lives in a similar style to this. It's Biographics. If you like this channel, if you like my other stuff, you're going to like this as well. Biographics, there is a link in the description below. Do go check it out and please do subscribe.